All right, Josh in Michigan sent me these 1998 XVZ 1300A Roll Star carburetors. It's a four cylinder Yamaha Cruiser. And I'm going to take them apart, put uh, carb kits in them, go to them, clean them, check them out. Uh, you can get different kits on eBay. Whichever kit you get, make sure it's got these big brass needle seats in it. And the, let me find me. Here I am. There's the float needle. Here's the needle seat. These O-rings wear out and fuel will leak around that seat and fill up. Same same thing happened if the float's sticking. They just leak around the whole valve. This needle and seat's just the valve to let the fuel in to the float bowl. When these O-rings get old and hard and dry, fuel will leak right past them. And, of course, they can wear out the actual seat itself and the point of the needle, so it's best to replace them in... You can get a kind of a basic kit like this. Most times all you need is the needle in the seats and the bowl gaskets right here. But you can also get like this All Balls brand racing, uh, all, all Balls racing brand carb kits. They cost you more money, but they're going to have all the washers, no rings. See, there's new needles in there. All screws, needle clips, the springs. Uh, more times than not, let's see here. Hang on a minute. I'll set you down. Get one of these out. Uh, okay, let me see. Yeah, this is, uh, oh, here it is, okay. Here you go. I'll show you. This is a more affordable kit. In reality, that's all you need most times is a new needle and seats and float bowl gaskets. You don't want to pull a, you got to take these apart to do anything to them. So you always want to put new needle and seats and gaskets on the float bowl no matter what. But this all ball kit here, all, uh, it's got new main jet, new air screw, fuel air mixture screw, new slow jet or pilot jet, whatever you want to call it. There's all your screws, the little screws that hold the float pin in. There's O rings. There's all four needles and seats. Slide needles. Either way you want to do it. Anyhow, he mailed them to me just like this. Normally, if I'd have taken them off the bike, I still get to this point. So I just look them over. And I've already looked them over good. And all the parts are here the choke so many times you see a, the choke cables broke or missing or choke parts are missing but he's got a real good example here of uh, a fine set of carbs they look great as far as they had been beat up or broke or missing you'd be surprised the stuff you see doing this but anyway I'll get them farther apart shoot another video and I'll keep doing that at the end of it I'll stitch it all together and put it on YouTube maybe it'll help you out and you can comment, you can ask me questions, send me your carbs, whatever you need to do. All right, here's how the carbs sit on the bike, like we're on the left side of the bike, where the shift lever is. If you look under them, those two screws, that's the ones you adjust to sink those two carbs. And from the other side of the motorcycle, you look under the carbs, and you have one screw right there. 
Normally, I'm mailing these back to, to Josh. I'm in Texas. He's in Michigan. They should be synced fine. They shouldn't be changed. But I was showing that in case he needs to sync them or, or adjust on them. What he can do is make for sure watch and knows where he know know where he's at and he can turn it a half or three quarter of a turn only either way and just listen with his ears if it starts running prettier leave it there you know nice and smoother they're probably fine the way they're at nine times out of ten if you haven't got sink gauges it's best to leave them alone but if it's running rough like that because the carbs are trying to make the cylinders run at different speeds that's why they're there what they do is what they're actually doing these butterflies they're opening and shutting them just one at a time on the carbs see here's the screws I got them upside down where you can see but you screw on them and it'll open that butterfly there more or less to get them equal and it it varies by the condition of of that cylinder and how much it's sucking I noticed on one that the butterfly I can tell is open more a little bit more than the other one well that would be like that because in a perfect world every cylinder is it sucking the exact same vacuum and running exactly the same so it's all, it's, it's about fine tuning it. So I just, I just wanted to point that out. Like I say you got two on one side, one on the other. And you plug your sink, the, the intake manifold rubber boots that the carb slide down into, down by the head, there's a brass nipple sticking off of them. It's just a place where it's sucking air. That's where you plug your vacuum gauges into each cylinder and then read your gauges and don't get mercury sticks they ain't worth a flip get simple inexpensive gauges like this they're way way easier to tune than those mercury sticks where they've got four tubes of mercury and you're looking at them and you just those are no good I mean I've used them both and trust me take my word on it you may already have your favorite if you don't save money get good old old school gauges like that and you can see your every movement and it makes life very very simple on you the EPA makes them put these brass plugs in here on top of the fuel air mixture screws at idle with the point on it that's how you that's how you adjust the fuel and air mixture at idle so I have a nine, I have a dent puller, it's a small dent puller, and a 964 drill bit. You gotta carefully drill them out. See, I stopped it before it went all the way through. The one on the left is normal, the one on the right I've drilled. I watched it, they're not very thick. You gotta be careful. You can't just gouge it in there. If you just gouge it in there, you'll hit this screw, and I've seen them hit, hit the screw with the drill, which tightens it up and jams it in there to where you can't get it out, and you have to buy a new carburetor body and rebuild it from there. So you just want to take a light touch, take your time, you ain't in no hurry. You can get it drilled out like I did this one here. Right here my finger is. That shows the thickness, not very thick. Some of them are a lot thinner than that. But I stopped before I went through, so I'm not, I know I haven't touched anything. And I can screw this to it, pop it out. They come out very easy. The whole deal here is 964 bit, just a regular size screw, anything, it don't matter. You don't have to have a dent puller. You can just put a screw in there and jerk back on your pliers and get it out. Oftentimes, just twisting it, tightening it up, loosens it, and while you're spinning it, you can pull it out. But you gotta do that. So you can get these out to clean the slow circuit. 
that's the whole ball game on these carbs that slow circuit and once they're all together and Josh gets them back in Michigan and gets them all on his bike gets it together all the way he can if his air filter if everything the more you can get on there the more accurate it'll be have it warmed up and good and warm and at a low idle at a nice low idle about as low as you can get it to idle and, and it keep running then you can adjust these one at a time these screws pulling them out will add fuel screwing them tighter takes away fuel and you listen you screw them out till it starts running bad you screw them in till it starts running bad so for example it's usually about between one and a half and two and a half turns out so you screw it all all the way in and seat it slightly you don't want to gouge it be heavy and then you back it out and you count your turns you watch your screw head you know one half one one half two two and a half out I'll see where they come normally they come a little bit lame but you tell it by ear usually if the, if, if the slow jet circuits jetted correctly but that's just how you can that's that's how you fine-tune them before you try to worry about sinking if it's running rough especially if it runs good you don't got to do nothing but if it's running a little rough like maybe that you have to set the idle too high for it to idle then it don't want to idle down you let go of the throttle up 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 it wants to keep idling that's usually these air screws that need to be adjusted just open them up add a little more fuel you don't want to go out more than about three, three and a half turns out. Any more than that, they'll be loose on the springs. They'll end up falling out on you. So you can just turn them in and out. And if your buck says two and a half out, that means from lightly seated all the way in, two and a half turns out is where they're set at the factory. But, but just so you know that, and I'll get them apart here and show them to you. You can see this one, as I said, just turning the screw in there and the whole plug is spinning. Let me see if I can get it where I can hold it. See? And I'm, I'm going to put you down. I'm just going to spin it to the right as I'm tightening up my screw. As I pull back on it, I'm just going to pin it. I'm not, I'm not having the hammer action at all. That's why you don't need a slide hammer. I'm spinning it to the right, pulling back on it. To the right, to tighten the screw while I'm pulling back. And there it is. That's the plug. I put my hand here so you can see. That's about an eighth inch, a little bit more than that thick. And there's your screw head down in it, see it? And those gotta come out, all of them need to come out. All right, I got Josh's carbs apart for the most part. Uh, I'll get the other ones apart here in a minute. I got this one apart. You can see they were pretty damn dirty. That's the main jet here. Wide open throttle and down here in front of my fingernail. That's the slow jet or the pilot jet. Over here, this little nozzle, that's where the choke picks up fuel. They're awful. You can thank our government for using corn for fuel. This is good old green ethanol at its best. It's just totally worthless. Uh, I know here in my town, Walmart sells ethanol-free fuel. That's better, especially if you're the kind of guy that's just going to ride now and then, you know, and it's to do a whole lot of sitting around. If your bike does, if you don't ride it every day pretty much, you need to get rid of ethanol. If, if you can it makes life easier but you can see all of them are dirty this one was kind of a dry dirty like it wasn't really getting much fuel and this other bank these two over here were wetter looking and these two over here drier looking uh, these are the parts the diaphragms here are critical you can have any pinholes tears or nothing those have to totally seal off up here 
those are good they're a little bit stiff but nothing to worry about I was just looking uh, I kind of laid it out as I took it apart the choke stuff and then just getting the bodies apart and here's the chokes to get the bodies apart these four carbs being the different carburetor bodies and uh, I'll get these other three apart like this one here in a minute I'll throw them all in my carb vat uh, right here it's got a dip bucket I'm gonna get all the brass in there let it soak overnight but first what I do I get them apart then I take my compressed air and blow through everything to, to hopefully dislodge anything that's totally stopped up and then the fluid the carburetor cleaner could do a better job of running through everything it's water based so when you get when you pull your parts out you want to rinse them off in water I got a tub of water right there it'll turn white and then to get the water out I put it in this is straight naphtha I use for parts cleaning I dip in there and blow it out and that tends to get the water out but we got uh, here's your floats the needle and the seat that o-ring wasn't bad loose but it was loose it goes right here but that o-ring's bad the fuel see here's where the fuel comes in the fuel just lays on top of this if that o-ring's bad fuel just comes right around it so the needle right here and the seat in here ain't gonna seal nothing off anyway if this o-ring's bad right here but we got all new anyway where am I there I am here's the slow jet or the pilot jet trust me nothing's running through that uh, we got new ones if you buy the better kits you usually most times you're gonna get the correct jets cheaper ones you got to watch it cheap kits the jets won't even have numbers stepped on them stamped on them so you kind of lost from where it go but that's what the where am I there I am there's an old slow jet or a pilot jet whatever you want to call it where am I right there is a new one what I normally do I'm gonna soak all I'm gonna soak all his brass <coughs> what I'm gonna use not use all of it I'm gonna soak it overnight and uh, typically what I do if it don't look that bad I reuse it because why I know it's the right chance it's been in the bike working and I won't use this stuff but in this case I'll verify the numbers on them I'll verify the numbers on the jets and I'll, after I get them cleaned I'll look to the hose and if I'm satisfied I'll put all the new brass in it here I use all the new parts because these just look pretty bad and what I'll do over over overnight probably won't clean this but I'll just leave it in my parts cleaner until next time I'm in there they'll be clean I'll clean them up blow them out and put them in my parts box I've got a a number of uh, caddies with lids that I keep parts organized in you know and I can put them in there for future use and new gaskets see if the gaskets are uh, see how that gasket just looks flat right there see how flat it looks that's dead that's going to leak. But we got new ones. All Balls brand for this bike uh, right here. You can tell if you're right or wrong because the bowl gaskets 98 times out of 100 if the, if the float bowl gaskets look right you've got the you got the right kits if they don't look right 
normally you've got the wrong kits. So anyway, I'm just gonna clean this up. This is where the fuel travels between the carbs when you take the bodies apart. I've got new O-rings in here for that. It's just a matter of getting everything clean, blowing through it all, and putting it all back together. And on, on his bike, the fuel-air mixture screws right here that I had to drill out. See how dirty that is? They were one and three-quarter turns out. So when I put them back together, I'll do them two turns out. And that should be on the money. But that's it. I may add more to this. I don't know. But uh, it's pretty cut and dried. Just keep your tools over here in one place and your parts in another place. When you get done with the job, if you still got parts laying around, take your time, figure out where they go, get everything right. These little bushings on the chokes go into the carburetors and the springs go a certain place. Pay attention. You can take a million pictures with your phone as you go. Just slow down, take your time, lay it out, lay, lay your parts out, just make it easy on yourself, you know. Alrighty, holler at me if you need something. Earlier before I had these apart, I told you these two over here look dry and these two were wet. I got one of them soaking over here with all the brass and bowls and what have you. But anyway, these two were dry. They were getting no fuel. Both of the needles here. Let me see if I can get a shot of that. Both of them were just stuck forever down in there. So, so I had to just take pliers. on the top of it here and wiggle it pull them out now in the event you're trying to reuse yours you don't really have to pull it out you can shoot carburetor cleaner in there or soak them and they'll loosen up till you can take them on out but I knew I had new needles and new seats so I wasn't really worrying about it I just got them out you got to be careful getting your float off you don't want to bend the metal tabs if you think you did, compare them to other carburetors. Uh, Josh told me his buddy Tyler, uh, he, well, it's no joke. Tyler's, Tyler said, uh, not Tyler, Josh said one day, Tyler was talking about his bike not running right. And Josh told him, well, have you ever oiled your muffler bearings? And Tyler, like, well, you know, no, I haven't, matter of fact. You know, trying to act like he knows everything. So Josh said, well, I'd go all those if I was you. So Tyler was like, uh, yeah, yeah, I believe I will. So he got the oil gun and went out there, and he said, took him a couple hours, but he finally come back in and told him that, yeah, he had those muffler bearings all oiled up, and life was good. <laughs> so anyway... Oh, I was going to tell y'all on this, uh, if you're unsure about where everything goes, I just kind of take it off when I get to taking the, the stuff out of each car. I just kind of put it in a pile because I know where it all goes. But if, you, if you're unsure about it, leave one of them totally together. Get your others done. And if you run into a question on where a thin or thick washer goes, Look at the one that you hadn't taken apart yet. Anyway, that'll do it. And I just got soaking time. Uh, these bodies, the carburetor cleaner tells you 20 minutes, but that's a lie. You want to take these air cutoff diaphragms out. Here they are here. Because the parts cleaner isn't good for the or the rubber here. This okay like on floats to leave them in there about an hour and they gonna hurt those or anything else or the throttle position sensor here. It's gonna be all right with that. But just soak them. I like to leave a carb, I like to leave the carb body in there an hour, two hours. Some carburetors it'll turn the body black. 
so sure the longer you soak them it's got to be better it just makes sense right so just check on them if they start trying to turn color colors on your stock <coughs> but I've never had one in an hour's time go black you know go funky looking just want to get it cleaned up blow to it everything verify the passages are open you'll be good holler at me if you need